Hello. Okay. It's been a long time since I've done a fantasy film dip video. And as I have lots of questions asked me regularly about the fantasy film dip, um, then I thought I would do a video and let's... I'm not an expert, it's just something I enjoy using. Um, so I thought let's find out together. So I'll tell you some of the few questions that I've been asked and that I'm going to try and investigate in this video. So, um, one of my subscribers, I am Gift Bearer, has asked me, can I layer one colour on top of another? Um, so she's looking to get different effects um, in wings, I believe, she said. So, you know, I'm thinking perhaps, can she go from blue to purple? Can she go, um, if she layers up different colours, will it give her, um, you know, a graded effect for um, wings, things like that. So I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dip a full piece into one colour and then the other. Does one colour totally take over the other um, or can you still see through? Um, and also I'm going to do a half dip. So we'll do one colour, then wait for it to completely dry and then half dip it and see um, whether then there's a nice transition between the two colours, whether it's too heavy, whether it rips, that kind of thing. Um, next question I was asked was... Um, what is the reason for the strengthener? Do we need it? I always use the strengthener because it makes me feel better. Um, when dipped they can be quite thin and it always gives me that little bit added assurance when I use the strengthener. But So what I thought I'd do is we will um, do it with one with and one without and compare to see how strong it is. Um, and then also I will, because another question was can you re-dip? Um, will you get a better colour? So I thought if I re-dip, that would answer two questions in one. If I re-dip a colour, does it get stronger? Um, and therefore, if you haven't got the strength, then do you need it? Um, and then also, does it give double intensity of colour? Um, and then the last one I'm asked quite regularly is about fitting pieces together in order to make a sculpture, in order to make um, you know, one piece from several elements. I've made wings, I've made a dragonfly, I've made um, flowers, but I've I sort of stuck to things that tend to be sort of um, several pieces of wire tied together in the centre. What I'm going to find out is, can I make something, yes that still has to be able to be fixed together and twisted, but also, can I glue one piece to another without having to twist the wires together. So can I do an independent piece and glue it to another piece that is then connected? So um, making it easier to make smaller elements that you can attach together rather than having one piece that's all sort of genetically put together in the centre. So that should give us more scope for things. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look and if we have any other questions along the way, we'll answer those too. But we can do some testing and see um, what else we can find out about this and whether we can get a nice finished piece at the end of it. Keep watching, I hope you enjoy.
did some experimenting. I had some mixed results. And let's have a look. Okay, so let's go back and see if I can remember what's what. Because these have been drying now. It's been a, I've been doing this over a couple of days. So the first question was, can I layer one colour on top of another? Okay, so I started off by doing all my circles and I did five circles in blue. So this is one coat and then I did a blue and I dipped it into the red and you can see there was kind of this funny indentation that happened. I didn't touch it, it just sort of dried like that. Um, so the red totally consumed the blue. So if you were to, um, you can double dip, um, but if you were to double dip, the second colour totally takes over from the first. Now, I did try this. You have to excuse me, I've got glitter and everything everywhere. Okay. So, yeah, I tried. What I was hoping for, what's the, let me just see if you can see that well. Okay. What I was hoping for was to see if the red gave like a, either a purpley effect or whether you could sort of see if it was transparent enough to see and it, it just took over that's it it's red so if you do second colour um, and I thought well perhaps the red was too much of a dominant colour to put onto the blue so then what I did was I did a white um, which would have started off like this and then I put a yellow over the top uh, I let dry for quite a long time um, well over sort of half an hour an hour and I came back and I did a yellow over the top of the white and this happened. So the yellow kind of remelted the white and it produced this really pretty swirly pattern. But then all the white that was dripping off because it had been re-wet went into my yellow. And now my yellow is not pure yellow anymore. It's a little bit opaque than it was in the first place because it's now got white in it. Now, I'm not saying that if you left this yellow, to, the, the white to dry for days, then went over the top, that might work. So then I thought, what about if I half dip it in? So I can see, one, see the colour density, but two, then perhaps if you made a wing, you could half dip the end of the wing in to see if you could get like a two-tone sort of colour effect and this happened. Yep, the top layer totally melted the bottom layer and put a hole straight through. So that was a disaster. Now other people may get better results than me but this is these are just my findings from my tests. So the second layer melts the first layer in my findings and totally yeah ate it so with this one the second layer marbled remelted the first layer but it did stay as one but because I half dipped this it totally burst it melted it and didn't do anything like I thought it was going to do so then I thought okay um can we double dip make it stronger um, with the same colour instead of using the strengthener. So I double dipped this one and I wouldn't say you can see more colour, it's not a clear colour, you can see where the colours... Yes, the second, the two coats is definitely stronger than the one coat. If you want that sort of marbly effect that's great, but I did have a couple of tries at this where the in one kept popping so you can double dip it is stronger it depends on what kind of effect you want and obviously each time you dip it's going to get darker um, and if you're fine with that that's fine um, the red I think it also depends on the color the red seems to have double dipped apart from this 
weird thing that happened in the middle. Um, the red double dipped better than the blue. Um, but I, I, to be honest, I love these swirls. I think it's really pretty. So that answers that. We can double dip. It does make it stronger. Um, I think it's a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes the bubbles can burst. We definitely, well, in my opinion, in my tests, I could not dip half. Whether it might be stronger if you double dip and then dip the end. I mean, there's lots more things you can do, but I, I sort of, you know, I have to sort of stop at a certain amount of tests. I can't go on forever. Um, this double dipped, but totally ruined the inner colour. Not at all what I expected. So, you can double dip, but you can't really do it to get um, effects with the colours unless this is what you're after, because the second colour dominates the first. This one I dipped in one layer of blue and then one layer of strengthener. And that feels just as strong as the double dip. But with the strengtheners, I've noticed they're much, much thinner than the dips themselves. So when the strengthener goes over the top, this is a pearl strengthener, when the strengthener goes over the top, it doesn't, it, it must be a different co composition, it must be a different um, chemicals because it does not try and eat the underlayer. It's obviously been designed to go over the top and it sticks to it. Um, yeah, and you can get clear or you can get um, pearl. I've got clear and pearl. Um, now whether you could put glitter in your clear and make it clear, uh, make it glittery, but then what I find, I just do the strength and then I sprinkle, which you saw me do with the bat wings, but I'll get up to those in a minute. So yeah, so my questions, that's question one, can we layer? Two, you don't have to have the strength in it if you want to double dip, but that gave me slightly mixed results. But um, if you want the transparent blue, you do need the strengthener or a clear, um, otherwise it just gets really dark. Um, and then the last one was, oh yes, what can we, uh, making sculptures, what can we use to stick things together? So that's what I'm going to get onto now. Um, so I think the, the strengthener I prefer, and I will continue to use the strengthener. I may double dip to get a more intense colour, and then to finish my pieces I will dip in the strengthener, because I find that gives me the best, most consistent results. So I will put these up at the end with um, on a piece of white paper so that you can have a look, pause the video and have a look to see what you think about the colours. I'm just putting these in my polystyrene block. This is actually just a cake dummy um, that I've used, because I used to make cakes, um, that I've used for, just to stick them in for the wire. So here I've got, some of you can see, hopefully you can, some bat wings and a bat body. And then this is the moon. I have made a resin um, circle. It's just a simple circle so that I can try and tie the wire around. I don't know whether this is how it's going to work, but I'm going to try and then if I need to stick them together, I'm going to use my super glue. Um, but I'm going to be really careful that the super glue doesn't touch too much of the dip because sometimes glues can dissolve acrylic. Um, things like that so we don't want to end up with more holes in pieces so let's have a go and see what we can achieve
Okay, so um, <laughs> this is my simple little bat um, sculpture. Um, it's just a resin ring, and then I've wrapped some uh, florist tape around it to hide the wire, and then put some glitter on. And I I'm a I'm very messy. Um, but um, this was basically a, a um, basic little sculpture to see, and it did glue. The glue did not disintegrate the acrylic surface, which I was really worried that it might. So it didn't. It stuck well. It stuck within a sort of 15-20 seconds. It was sort of sticking. Um, yeah, and I didn't have any issues with it. It didn't fall apart. It didn't melt through. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, so I'm going to put all these uh, it, together on a little on a piece of paper so that you can see easily, and I'll insert a picture of that. Um, but yeah, I think these tests have been quite successful. Um, yeah, there's still lots to learn with the with the fantasy film, but I think it's it's really interesting. Um, you can certainly do things with this that you can't do with regular UV resin. They have bought out a UV resin dip. Um, I haven't tried that. I've seen it on um, Sophie and Toffee videos, um, but, but I haven't tried it, so I'm not quite sure how that works. But I certainly, I love playing with this stuff. I, I love uh, the effects I can get. I love um, seeing what I can do. I've painted on it, glittered on it, um, added jewels to it, things like that. So yeah, I think it's very interesting and I'll definitely try to do some bigger sculptures with it, some bigger pieces with it um, and see, yeah, see what the limits are really. Thank you ever so much for watching, I really do appreciate you and I hope you this answered some of your questions. Um, if you have got any more questions, I, I'm no expert but we can find out together and we can do some testing and we can see what the results come out as. So take care, thanks again, bye bye.